Hey, what up, y'all? It's Derek Gray, supporting live with hip-hop since 1987. Be sure to check out the interview ASAP. Shout my hip-hop since 1987, niggas. Hip-hop since 1987.com. What's going on? Y'all now tuned in to Hip Hop from 1987. I'm the host, Chris Mack Experience. Here with my man, Derek Grace, For author. Sure. Man, look, CEO <laughs> of like a million businesses. Go on, just click the link tree. I mean, link, link in his Instagram, you know. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's good to see you here. Man. Likewise, I'm bro. glad to see you here. You know, like I was telling you earlier, uh, Big, big follower of what you've been doing. Pretty sure. Um, first thing is you're 100% independent. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? As an independent, being a part of an independent um, um, blog uh, with Hip Hop from 1987, being independent is like, that's big for me. You yeah, feel yeah. what I'm saying? And seeing Absolutely. the moves that you make independently is just right. motivation. Pretty sure. You feel what I'm saying? Um, but we're here to talk about the in home banking. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. get right to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's tell me about it. Where did yeah, the idea um, come from? It started, I started the concept in 2017. Uh, it initially was a, a learning curriculum and a course. And then, you know, I, I just took note that a lot of people don't learn uh, best through traditional ways of just sitting there like, I mean, school, I, I didn't learn well just sitting and listening to a teacher talk all day and handing me a piece of paper. That's and I, and I, I began to notice that same thing with the culture as people was buying the curriculums and taking the courses. A lot of them really weren't grasping the, uh, the information nor applying it. So, um, hey, bro, we could be like honest on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be All right. honest. Talk so it was it. like it was October 9th of last year when it really dawned on me that people wasn't digesting the information based on like a classroom setting because that's what we initially was doing. Mm -hmm. So I remember that night, bro. I got uh, had my medicine. I got really high that night. I was just chilling. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna turn the concept into a board game because what I have learned with our people that uh, a lot of us, you know, we just overly invested in entertainment. So I was like, damn, you know how. How can I still get this information to people, but damn near trick them and, and, and infiltrate their homes and trick them into learning the information? Mm -hmm. Because again, again, I noticed like just putting a book in their hand wasn't working. So, um, bro, I just transitioned the information that I had been teaching, added a bunch more, and turned it into an actual board game. And like I said, I just know our people love entertainment, so it was more so the medicine and the candy method, just finding a way to get their attention, to get them to support, to get them to purchase it. And then, you know, they mess around and get home and they accidentally learn some shit that they never knew before. And that's exactly what happened. And that's, that's, that's impactful. Pretty sure. You know man. what I'm saying? The, the amounts of <clears throat> uh, people, demographics that you can reach yeah, yeah. with a single idea. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, bro. We done, <laughs> we done shipped Australia, Bermuda, UK, all over the world. I mean, of course, in state, but this information, uh, you know, transition uh, uh, globally at this point is all over the world. That's, that's. Global's where it's at, man. Yeah, absolutely. Global's definitely where it's at. Power social media. Get, get, get <laughs> you it. anywhere in the moment, right Yo, now. Legit, legit. Yeah. You know, you, hey, I need to contact somebody in Australia. I need right. to get this board game in Australia. I'll find somebody. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. you go in there, you mess around with some hashtags, you'll find them, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. No, bro, them <laughs> hashtags were money. Sure. You'll find anybody with them. Yeah. So, so, let's backtrack before the game. Okay. Right? Let's, start, let's talk about, like, the beginning. I got right? Like, we're all, like... The mind, where the mindset came from, yeah, yeah. the whole like I know you're a big Shook Knight fan, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So, how like speak about that? Like how did that translate into like what gotcha. you're trying to do? Or where'd you come from with all of this? Yeah, bro, I study uh, a lot of people like Shook, Jay, uh, Jay Prince, Nip, uh, Master P. Like all those people had the OGs. At, yeah, yeah. At some point or another, they yeah, had yeah. independent ventures that they invested their own dough in. You know, they put their time, their sweat, equity, their energy, their blood. And they turn it into like, you know, uh, empires more so. So, um, bro, I started out in retail in 2012. I had a retail business called Me and the Bound. Uh, I made screen print t-shirts back then and I had to connect. A young lady I was dealing with, her aunt was tied in with Jordan Brand and Foot Action. Mm. So I would get like exclusive releases like LeBron's, Phone Posits, Jordan's. And then I would make t-shirts with my, with my branding on it that coincided with the colorway of the shoe. Uh, that's initially how I got into entrepreneurship, just through clothing, because dressing has always been one of my, well, used to be one of my favorite things. 
I'm not so much into it. I just wear him on bacon t-shirts and jaws now. You got the change, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean, clinging yeah, all yeah. over the place. Got to, bro. Got you to. coming a mile away. Yeah, yeah. I, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like my neck about to fall off right now. <laughs> I'm hanging in there. But, um, but no, bro, that's how I started out. I, I always loved, like, on, only shit I loved in school was English and reading. So eventually, by 2014, I wrote my first book. It was a 700-page autobiography about my life. Mm. And then by 16, by 2016, I became a number one selling author with my second book. I did some, you know, some amazing numbers uh, when I released that book, June 8th, 2016. But outside of that, bro, that's that's when I fully, I had a video that went viral with my children in 2016, the same day, June 8th. I and then that people, video. yeah, yeah, people, or people started knocking down the door, just saying like, "What are you teaching them? How are you teaching them?" And uh, where I wasn't even writing curriculums or, or nothing like this thought of at that point. I, I just was in home. I was uh, homeschooling my children and educating them on what I felt like they needed in real life. Mm. But the world got a whiff of it. They made a demand, and at that point, that's when I started writing curriculums, start writing more books, just getting fully into the educational uh, lane. And then, you know, like I said, around 2017, and home banking was created, and I ain't gonna lie, nothing been the same since then. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the true independent journey. Yeah, yeah, bro. From from, from day one, mud. from self publishing uh, to distribution, everything we uh, we put our own money up since day one. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I I I had some times where I sat back and was like, damn, I wish somebody would invest, I wish somebody would help, but in retrospect, I wouldn't change nothing, cause you know we own the rights to everything, we collect mm. all our royalties. We got full control of our image, our likeness. Uh, and another thing too, bro, the, the beauty about independence is when the corporate structure finally does step in and want to partner with you, you hold so much leverage. Like when you can look at them and say like, hey, well, we know we got an ROI of a damn near 600% on the board games. We've made X amount of millions of dollars or whatever the case is. They got to respect it and they got to come with an offer that makes sense or, you know, otherwise you tell them get the hell out of the room and keep doing it the independent way. No, that's, that's exactly how it goes. So, so, all right, so for me, the first time um, I got word of you mm -hmm. was that video post, yeah, right? Yeah. And it was more so a lot of positive mm -hmm. and a whole mm -hmm. lot of negative. You feel what I'm saying? It was like, yo, like, no, you yeah. can't do that, you shouldn't do that. Right, right. Then there's other people like, yeah, you need to, like, right, you see right. what's going on out here? Then right. other people was like, that's not what you should be doing. So, so at that point, you weren't even... Like you said, you weren't doing anything. You weren't even really thinking about it uh, like that. No. Nah. So how did at that point before like now? I'm pretty sure you can deal with it a lot uh, easier. It's like all right. On, on, mean, on, on at our, that bro, point, how how did you deal with that? Bro, that shit coming up me, ain't bothering me at all. Get out of here, um, bro. One of the biggest things. So like, not to say I was like the coolest person in school, bro, but I always been popular. I always been like, I mean, shit, bro. I, I'm I'm I remember people harassing me and picking on me and shit in school because I talked proper because I had every wow. like. <laughs> Niggas used to really come to me and be like, oh, you a pretty boy, your shoes clean. And I'm like, bro, my daddy spent a hundred on these joints. Right. Why would I go kick, they should, they kick oil clean. and shit in them? Yeah. Feel me? So I've always, uh, I've always been like. Had that bravado a little bit. Of yeah, bro. Like, a, a, a high right, level of confidence. Yeah. And then like, that's why I, bro, I be big on affirmations with my children, bro. My mama reminded me every day, like, how handsome I was, how smart I was, how amazing I was going to be. So I ain't going to lie, bro. When, when, when they be throwing them stones, they really don't. Just to be honest, bro, to be 100% truthful with you, more times than not, bro, we get high and we will read the comments and laugh, laugh like, to the right, mirror. Right, 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 right. Go to bed. Like Go to bed. Wake up the next day. Do it again. <laughs> yeah, you don't even just be like, it is what it is. People going to be people at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, exactly, bro. Like, I, bro, I could save 100 children tomorrow from a burning building and somebody be like, well, it was one more left in there you ain't getting, yeah, you ain't yeah, shit because yeah. you ain't save him too. So, I, mean, I don't be tripping, bro. So, so, so. That's 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 powerful, bro. I can't, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I just know, like, even just coming up independently, mm -hmm. dealing with negative, just feedback. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people get real emotional about it. No, right. really no, nah, nah, bro. For me, I look at it like it's just a part of the game. It comes with the territory. So, I tell people all the time, like, and in, 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 in success, there are going to be different epiphanies that you have, that you're going to have the opportunity to walk away or continue to walk in the path that you're going. And like, that's why bro, I ain't gonna lie, like, I don't even really be feeling bad for a lot of people end up in those situations, bro, because I'm gonna give a promise example. Jay-Z worth a billion. 
you gotta know, you gotta have common sense to know that it's some shit that's gonna come with acquiring a billion dollars that you, oh, yeah. the, most people don't go through. Yeah. So you, you it's a like, different struggle. Yeah, you understand, bro. Just part of the game. Like some, there's gonna be somebody in your journey that call you a scumbag. That say yeah. you robbed them. That say like you did something unethical. Like it's just part of the game. So, for me, bro, I, I just take it on the chin and like, and I tell you about the time, bro. You, you like, I have two boxes in my brain. I have. I val I potentially value your opinion, and your opinion means nothing to me. Mm. And I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Like ninety five percent of the people I encounter on a daily basis, they go into that box. That mean like your opinion don't mean shit to me. My children think I'm that dude, so that's all that matters. Yeah, bro. I don't, I don't really be tripping on the dog. That's how I get it. I see my son. He smile, run, daddy, <laughs> hands off, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like right. I ain't never see you. Like, all right, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So, so, all right, so. I, I need some gems. Yeah, yeah. I need some gems from you. You know <clears> what I'm saying? <throat> you know, I hear, you know, you have a nice little dope living situation. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I need some gems. Uh, Talk to the people. Well, I'm, I'm going to say this, bro. I had a nice situation. I had a nice Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we, we no longer that structure that you mentioned. Right, 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 right. Both my baby moms in the yeah. same house and a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's... that's uh, it, man. That, that. Was that... How was that? Can can we talk about that? Yeah, bro. I'm, how, how I'm not gonna fake with you. It was amazing. Two, it, I mean, it I, it, it had its ups and downs. Yeah, it had its pros and its cons, but course. overall, it was amazing. I had so fun. yeah, so yeah, yeah. Whoopi baby moms. And my baby mama, she's bisexual, so she had a girlfriend. Oh. Yeah. And the other. Yeah. Oh. Well, it, it was cool. That's three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a right, do you have a one bedroom or a two bedroom? Or like, no. how, how did how that work? It's a three bedroom and a den, two car garage. <laughs> so did you just have all the room just cause just for the flex? No, no, all, no. I stayed in separate rooms. No, we stayed in separate rooms. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was in a room with one, and the other two was in one room. That's, that's and then every now and then we'll just, just, all just hang bring, out. have a little party. You know, yeah, you yeah. bring your friends, I bring my friends. You know, we can be friends. You know, taste <laughs> nice. yo, I, yo, yo. But we gonna no, talk man. after this. I need some gems, man. I would say this, bro. Uh huh. My baby mom be tripping. Communication is a big thing. Okay. Transparency is a big thing. A healthy respect level is a big thing. Mm. And I don't want to say fear, but when I say healthy respect level, bro, what I mean is like that's all about that. You can you go into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna say this: like the mothers of my children know the extent that I'll go to to nurture the relationship between myself and my children. And they've seen me upset with other people. Not that it was intentional, but it does help because they do understand like how I'm gonna react right. when I feel a way about the things that I love the most. So with that in their subconscious, we don't really have a lot of issues when it comes to my children because they know how that's gonna go. Right. And I'm a I'm a greedy daddy. So that means like I'll I'll go to any extent to make sure I nurture the relationship between all my children and myself and my children. So Absolutely. with so many worries, they know like that probably wouldn't be a good idea. Like, you could be mad at me on some one-on-one -on -one adult shit. Right. But don't involve the children, because that's not going to go well. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that. I like that. I like that. No, because I, I was thinking, I was like, yo, it's got to be. It's got to be something. You know what I mean? But it, but when you started talking about communication, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Having a healthy respect level. A yeah. healthy respect. Right, that's right. where it is. That's where it, and I'm, I'm, everything I'm, is. The, the break is at. The respect. I'm going to tell you one more, bro, in terms of gems. Uh... In my parent-child curriculum, I wrote about this thing called kid gloves. And what a lot of people got to understand is like when you can identify what triggers or pisses off your the other parent, partner, baby mama, baby daddy, you put on your kid gloves to deal with that individual. I'll give you a prime example. When people get pulled over, they typically sit up straight and they throw on their seatbelt. You putting on your kid gloves right now because you understand you got to deal with this officer in a delicate manner because you don't want this shit to go left. So you make sure you do as much as you can so he can have his little to say about y'all encounter. He could just say whatever he say, write his ticket, keep it moving. So bro, I think a lot of people got to practice that same behavior <coughs> with their baby mama, baby dad. Because like, they be knowing what to trigger them and they still do it. Or they be so caught up in their ego and their pride that they won't like... Take that step back. Yeah, take that step back just to be like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you have it. Because this going to trans transition into an argument. And that's just going to cause, you know, more turmoil in terms of us co-parenting. So... Kid gloves to me, bro, is the biggest one. Like, it's people that have cussed out their baby mom, baby daddy, but won't talk to their boss like that. Yeah. That's because, bro, is in control of your cash flow. So that's subconsciously, you know, you better handle that man a certain way if you want your money. And I think, like, when people use that identical ideology with their baby mama, baby daddy, 
they'll get way further. Like, okay, cool, you value your bread, you should value the environment that your child is in as well. His, mm-hmm. his or her level of happiness is, it's a trickle down effect. All that shit go right. down back to the babies. And then I'm, I'm gonna say one more thing, bro. In terms of co-parenting, uh, everything that affects the mother or the father will soon affect the child. So if you can be of any assistance to your baby mama or your baby daddy, it does help to keep them in a, to try your best. Like you can't save everybody, but try your best to keep them in a healthy mental space because it will affect your daughter or your son one day if their moms or their pops are stressing every day they come home. So that's another one with me that like actually, it can backfire till you get you get to a place where you just strictly enabling people, but at the same time, like it can also help the fact that like everybody around me, I try to make their lives as smooth and simple as possible. And when their lives are smooth and simple, they usually reciprocate that energy and make sure mine's are smooth and simple. So for the most part, we work together and we get, we get everything done. And for the most part, everybody happy. I'm applying all of that. I got my kids' gloves on right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm applying that with everything, especially the ladies. Yeah, absolutely. Put them joints on. Shout my hip-hop since 1987, niggas. Hip-hop since 1987.com. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was that was Devin Drake first came through, you know what I'm saying? That nigga came through professional as a motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> like for real. Yeah, I ain't even gonna stand, you know what I'm saying? That nigga came here. through for you. So your time there during that period was how, you know, how was your time there during the period, you know, dealing with the whole cash money emergence going through It was the next I ain't gonna month. like we we always we did our separate thing from them. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like we wasn't, you know, like so much like intertwined with whatever you know baby and shit was doing okay you feel me? like we was you know like in our own shit, you know what i'm saying we all we had we had our own you know studio sessions booked our own you know what i'm saying you know going going on the road doing our own shows 